This is Shark Anchor, a legendary sword in Blocks Fruits which is literally every player's dream to have. And today I'm going to be obtaining this and teaching you how you can get it for yourself. If you guys want to awaken it too, then just follow along with what I do. I will explain everything in a lot of detail to make sure you don't miss a step. First, once you are on Tiki Outpost, you need to go to the location where I'm heading. Pay close attention to the route I take so you don't get lost. When you get there, you will find an NPC. Talk to this NPC and buy the monster magnet. Just like I did, if you don't have the necessary materials to buy the monster magnet, you'll need to gather them by doing C events. C events can be tricky, but they're essential for getting the materials you need. Keep an eye out for the materials you need during these events, and collect as many as possible. Once you have the monster magnet, the next step is to get a boat. I chose the beast hunter boat because it's a good balance between speed and durability. I recommend avoiding Avoiding small, fast boats because they move too quickly for sea events to trigger properly. You need to give the events time to happen. And a slower boat helps with that. Now that we're in our ship, we're going to start sailing. Our goal is to reach at least the fifth danger zone. As you sail, keep an eye out for a terror shark with a magnet on it. This shark is what you're looking for, and it has 195,000 health. For fighting the shark, I recommend using the Buddha fruit because you have a lot of range and water does not damage you. But you can use any fruit you're comfortable with. Okay, we've been sailing for a few minutes now, and we're currently in danger zone 3. Typically, you can find the terror shark in danger zones 3, 4, 5, and 6. However, I advise against going to danger zone six because it's too dark to see anything which makes it much harder to find the shark and stay safe now we're continuing our journey and we've reached danger zone four and there it is we found the terror shark no joke it's been just five minutes since we started looking which is incredibly lucky normally it takes people hours to find it i must have some great luck today now let's kill the terror shark i'm using buddha fruit along with the sanguine art the strategy here is to spam sanguine abilities. Whenever the shark damages me too much, I use the sanguine Z ability, which helps me regain a lot of health quickly. This is crucial because the shark hits hard, and you need to keep your health up. I also use the sanguine C ability while jumping really high, this way, the shark can't reach me easily, and I can deal damage from a safe distance. During the fight, my friend was helping me, along with a random player who joined us. Unfortunately, my friend's game froze towards the end of the fight, so he couldn't help anymore. Luckily, the random player continued to assist, which made a big difference. The health of the shark was draining extremely fast, thanks to our combined efforts. And before we knew it, the shark was defeated. And then I saw the item drop called Shark Anchor. We received it so quickly, which was just crazy. Now, it's time to get max mastery on it. And that's going to take ages. To do this, we're going to have to kill a ton of cake queens. For now, I went into a raid for literally no reason. I have no idea why I did that. During the raid, our damage counter almost reached 800k with the shark anchor, which is really good, but we still hadn't unlocked any moves yet. So, let's head over to Tiki Outpost. The reason I went there was to accept quests and earn money while simultaneously earning mastery. This is a great strategy because you make progress on multiple fronts, leveling up your mastery, completing quests, and earning in-game currency. At Tiki Outpost, we unlocked our first move, called Typhoon Toss. It did 9k damage, but that was because there were a lot of NPCs in one place. The design of the move looks very cool. I'll show you guys properly later in this video. Now it's time to head over to Big Mom. We can't forget to accept the quest since it pays us a ton of cash. While fighting Big Mom, we were doing about 2800 damage with each M1 attack, which is actually really good if I do say so myself. We got a ton of mastery levels from this fight. Next, let's server hop to find more cake queens. Server hopping is a useful technique to find and fight bosses quickly. Okay, there's another cake queen here along with another player. Let's just hope he doesn't cause trouble. And, he is attacking us, and we're dead, bro. This guy is so annoying. Okay, let's go again. We still got the mastery from the fight, which is pretty cool. Okay, guys, after fighting a lot of cake queens, this is the last one for the video. All we need is one more mastery level before we unlock the final move. And boom, it's awakened. The final move is called Armor Breaker. Let's test the damage now. It does 8000 damage, which is insane. And the ability looks way too cool, bro. Now it's time to test both abilities for their damage. The first move did 3400 damage, and you can keep it pressed for more damage. The opponent died but ended up resetting because he had randomly killed me before and wanted to return the bounty. For the second test, the move did 4700 damage, which is a lot. The opponent was just standing still, so we could hit him with the move completely, making it do a lot of damage. Okay, now let's test the armor breaker move. The first test showed it doing 4000 damage, which is not bad since we weren't even holding it down. The second time, it did 4300 damage, and we accidentally killed the opponent. Oops, 
for the last test, it did 4000 damage again, which is good, this sword is a must have if you are a Blox Fruits player. Cut, cut, cut.